So, alright, you guys saw that disgustingly sexy clip from Kakyoin of the Jojo Bizarre Adventures, and some of you might have guessed it. No, we are not having a collaboration today. And, well, before we let the cat out of the box, very right, good day to you fellow greasers, good day guys, and welcome back to Lang Greaser and News from the Future. And on part one of the video, we're featuring the new hero that are being released for the month of June to July 2024 from the new Adventures of Lang Greasers, aka Lang Greaser Millennium Arc. And this is the prequel, Langriza Millennium WS. And I guess, really, a very great thanks to information shared and provided by the Langriza mobile app, Monghua Moitan Soyu. And let's get started. So, what you guys are looking at right now is the protagonist, Xion, from the Langriza Millennium WS. And after after finally so long for um, almost six years, Langriza finally released a very strong heroes or protagonist with very great ability that can finally of great use to the team. And we'll be finding out in a while because the usual stuff, the video will be split into three sections. The first being the VA of the character, second by the talent, and third but not least the pros and cons of the characters and watch to the end for the translations and item builds of the heroes that I've sh well did for you guys. So alright. And <clears throat> Shion is voiced by none other than Mr. Daisuke Hirakawa, who have well as you guys have saw at the start from the clip by Kakyoin who has starred in the Jojo Bizarre Adventures, the Bizarre Adventures of Jojo's and yep, that disgustingly sexy lelo 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 video. <laughs> so quick background about Shion. So he used to be he grown up in as a farm boy, living with his mom and However, after a clashing with a group of bandit ones, he find out by accident that apparently he is the last surviving prince of a dead kingdom. Yep. Or he's the last um, descendant of a dying kingdom, the, the prince of the country. And he is now on a journey to revive his kingdom. For, and his quote is Salem's glory or for the glory of Salamus. Um, it's roughly translated as Salem's or Salamus. So Okay, we will leave the speech later. So as you guys can see, Mr. Daisuke Hirakara voice um Quite some famous series. On the left is the Bila Adventures of Jojo, Stardust Crusade as Kakyoin, and on the right, um, if I'm not wrong, it's considered a animated more suited for girls. It's known as Itazura no Kiss, um, which I think the English version is quite. It all started with a kiss. Yep. Or prank of kids if you're loosely translated. And on the right, um, he's a male leading character. He's voicing as a male leading character. <laughs> Related hero. So um, the one that's question marks will be seen on part two. 
for so many years, this lady has been living side by side with Xion, um, close as mothers and son. However, an accident caused her to hide her identity and it is being slowly revealed. And because this is a new arc of the series, um, of course this era was taken from an old game, but um, was treated as new um, in our languages, so it's con considered um, as the actual episode 7 in according to the actual um, Languiza game is supposed to be Languiza um, in releasing order of the game it should be Languiza 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 then Languiza Millennium then followed by Languiza Millennium WS then finally they end with Languiza Reincarnation then in accordance to storyline order it should be Languiza 3 one, two, four, five, Langriza Millennium WS, Langriza Millennium, and followed by, well, reincarnations for all of, all of you guys um, who are interested. So WS take place at least 100 years before the Langriza Millennium arc. And of course, guys, I'm trying my best to keep um, this first part not that long and drag as possible and last but not least this is a chibi art by Grande Curry Liana Mel Xiao to Liana yep this is a chibi art of Xion and yep he is the protagonist of the game series and not to mention in Languiza M he is the first character given the ability of the protagonist Tree C faction bar. Alright, I'm going to tune out a bit of volume so you guys can hear. So this is how he sounds like as the Prince of Salamus. And here we go. So it is some some sort of um corny jokes corny jokes if you're correct me so apparently he's saying Salem the Prince of Salem Xion at your service Huh The one you're looking for is not me There has been the summoning mistake How how can this be? So yep um this is the first time that you guys have actually seen that um instead of not following the history sequence but in the sequence of game release for Langry's uh, M itself um, this is the first time they actually follow the sequence that they released uh, Langry's um, Millennium WS first instead of Langry's um, Millennium and apparently it's like a joke about it and not to mention um, there have been some weird memes and also dirty jokes going around this um, hero's banner because of he, um, we address Xion as the stepson and yep apparently he has a lady who take care of him known as by the fans known as the stepmother <laughs> And then I think we also have some sort of weird um, step sisters, elder sisters and younger sister relationship in the games and perhaps you guys will be finding out more. And that's it for this part. We're going to part two and let's hear it again. Here we go before we go to the character skills. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually fun to hear this um after um all the sadness from the main storyline. <laughs> and alright, that's it. 
And now coming to part two of everyone's favorite sections, showcasing the character's faction buff, talent, exclusive skills, and tree C. And well, here we go. So Xion is um this definitely I guess it is uh it's not just an adding icing on top of a cake. This is a great buff for the protagonist um, faction. Apparently after such a long time, almost six years, we finally get such improvement and you guys are finding out soon. And of course, watch till the end for the translation and item builds I have done for you guys. And here we go. So Xion is his faction buff uh, protagonist, Glory of Light and Yellis. So um, even if he do not have the protagonist faction buff, having a Glory of Light is definitely the current uh, meta thingy because of LLR Crease and not to mention her faction buff provide HP recovery. This is pretty awesome. <coughs> And okay, coming to Talon's effect, and do note that um, this is just rough translations I've done for you guys. These are not the final products. During the actual release, definitely the names given will be different. So, all right, here we go. The effect are as follow. Number one, increase attack by 25%. Number two, once you end your turn, while you have battle, and not able to kill the enemy this turn, you will obtain the buff known as King's Order. King's Order buff effect will provide the following. First, when you initiate attack and go into battle, increase damage deal by 20%. Second, you will attack first. Third, this whole effect will last for two turns. Okay. Number three for the his effect. When you initiate attack, goes into battle and able to deal a death blow, you can choose to pardon the target enemy and this will cause the enemy um, to have this uh, enter this weird state for the next turn onward so the effect will be number one so it first the enemies cannot they will not be able to guard second the enemy is not able to move third the enemy is not able to attack and use skills fourth they will gain this um, debuff effect known as idle battle the effect is that damage to you and healing received will be reduced by 30 percent fifth this effect cannot be immune dispel and last for two turns okay number four effect when you pardon the enemy unit you will recover 100% of your HP. And that's it. These are the effects of his talent. And in case you guys are wondering, it is pretty darn great for a protagonist hero. Okay, this is definitely the first time in Langriza history for um, the actual protagonist. Um, themselves to have such great um, effects and ability of course if you guys are trying to count in Elwin and and Ladin that's not the case they're considered more of um, glory of light in terms of the mobile mobile um, storyline okay so what makes him so great is that he has attack increment of 25% that's the first thing then second is that um, Correct me if I'm wrong, he's the first character that um, if you battle with enemy and you're not able to kill the enemy, you obtain this King's Order's buff effect, which will 
provide you a damage buff increment of 20%. And not to mention, having this when you, this buff is in fact, uh, you'll get an attack first. But do know that um, this effect can be removed because um, it is not sated. It cannot be uh, immune nor removed. And uh, the strongest of all is the third effect. And in case some of you get wrong ideas, I'm going to explain. The third effect we talk about is when you initiate the attack goes to battle, able to deal a death blow for Shion case, able to deal the death blow doesn't mean you must be able to one shot kill the enemy and they cannot revive this is not the case um in shion case dealing a death blow means if the enemy hp is ten thousand, and you are able to re um to reduce the hp to zero even if they resurrect or revive afterwards he can still activate his pardon ability which in return cause the enemies to not be able to do anything, which I call it a weird state. Uh, or, well, we call it a stun state. They cannot guard, move, attack, use skills. And not to mention the damage deal, damage they deal and healing received are reduced by 30%. And the effects cannot be immune, dispel, and they last for two turns. So pretty much time for you to um survive or do something else then not to mention after you attack the enemy you pardon them you don't get minor hp recovery like um elwin you only recover back um 30 percent of the damage you do you automatically recover 100 percent of hp so this is pretty good and this means you can use him to punish the enemy at the same time to stay there and able to survive an incoming attack because I have full health. There's higher chance that you can tank at least um, more than one incoming hit from the enemy. And of course, uh, any another great thing about him is that he's definitely one of first, uh, the first protagonists that is able to have act against ability. And you guys will be finding out soon. So stay on with me, guys. Okay, exclusive skill one. And not to mention, he has quite um, not one, not two, but three exclusive skills. Exclusive skill one, as you guys can see here, is known as Divine Radiant Sword or Glory of Light um, God Blade. <laughs> Okay, it's a 2C skills, has a CD of 2 turns, and the range is 2 block. The AoE type is physical single target. The effects are as follow. Number 1, attack and do 1.4 times damage to target enemy. Number 2, when you use these skills in close combat, the following will happen. First, dispel 3 buff from the target enemy before battle. Second, you will be able to move three blocks after the battle. Okay, the third effect, the number three is when used in range combat, the following will happen. First, reduce this skill CD by minus one. Second, melee soldiers unit will attack together and third, you will not take close combat penalty. So, um, not bad for a 2C skills. This is like the original um, protagonist, they'll get this ass slash, and this is like a, definitely a virgin tree of an ass slash. Um, AVs 2.0 has his own version of ass slash, and Shion now get this Divine Radiant Sword. Um, it has a better effect. Um, which comes in a form of two versions, either in close combat or range. Close combat gives you the spell effect and allows you to move three blocks, meaning you will be able to retreat back to your 
um, tanks protection range after the combat. That's pretty good. Then, whereas if you choose to use the range ability, you can get to reduce this skill CD by one, which means you can spam it soon. And close combat soldiers will attack together the usual stuff, and you will not take penalty. So that's it for his exclusive skill one. Then all right, exclusive skill two, nation revival determinations. Okay, again, it's a two C skills that has a CD of three. The range is self-targeting. The AOE type is global protagonist faction buff. So yep, this is the two C version of his protagonist faction buff. And surprise, 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 he has both two C's and three C's faction buff. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, right, the effect are as follows. Number one, increase all allies' offensive defensive stats of protagonist faction. Number two, when using single target skills, increase damage deal by 12%. Number three, when using single target skills and not able to kill the enemy, reduce the CD of the skill used by minus one. Number four, this effect will last for four turns and cannot stack with other faction buff. So um, the 2C version is definitely for players who just start playing out Langrisa and when they get Xion, they're not able to um, release his 3C version of the skills yet. And nonetheless, this is definitely um, a great faction buff. Uh, not that, not only that, but of, of course it also has a downside. But um, let's talk about the pros first. The pros is that when using single target skills, you have damage increment by 12%. Then um, if your single target skills is not able to kill enemy, the skills CD will be reduced by minus one. This means that um, this faction buff can stack with um, before any verification just on text it feels like this um, effect faction buff effect can stack off with stack on with the exclusive one skills um, so you can straight away get a minus two CD and then you can spend the skills again next turn so that's pretty cool and of course the downside is that um, it does not work well with AOE protagonists. And the, the greatest downside and worst thing is that um, protagonists like protagonists like Aries 2.0 and Mashu, um, they are, especially SP Mashu, they are more um, based on the ability given to them. They are much more AOE oriented. So for some reason, um, Xion's faction buff is not going to work that great with them. I mean, you can still accept the stats, but you're losing out on the effect. Or if you want to com combo or combine with them, you got to um, force both Mashu and Aries 2.0 to change to single target skills. Okay, coming to exclusive skill tree. Okay, definitely one of um, okay, definitely one of the best thing we like about this skills is that it's an egg against skills, and you have both passive and active. And the best part is that this is a one C cost skills, which means uh, you definitely got to equip it while you're still able to equip other strong skills okay this effect is known as rapid attack is a 1c cost has a cd of four turns the range is self-targeting the aoe type is single target so we're going through on the passive effect first passive effect number one when there is an enemy within your allies talent effect of idle battle buff effect three blocks around you 
while receiving a death blow, the unit will die instead. <clears throat> and however, there's a cap limit. It will only take in damage for you of no more than the target's max HP times 5 times. And number two, after using these skills, you recover 20% of your own HP. Number three, upon trigger, the skills will enter a CD of two turns before you can use again. And the triggering is talking about um, the receiving death flow effect. And in case you guys are confused about it, same as me when I first read it, I'm going to explain to you guys. So now, for example, on enemies, um, you're using Xion, you charge in into the enemy's terrain, fighting them. So let's say there is two enemy. So one being, uh, let's say, Bozo. Then followed by mm, <clears throat> oh gosh, that's a, okay. Followed by um, Ladin. So when you charge in a battle, for some reason you are able to kill off Bozo, and then you activate your talents effect. Pardon. So you will cause uh, Bozo to leave, not able to do anything, and went to like a stun state, while gaining the debuff idle battle effect. And then you end your turn at the block. Then during the enemy's turn, while this debuff effect is still there, if and, and you're standing three blocks around the target with this debuff, if let's say Ladin managed to come in, charge at you, and he managed to kill you instead of Xion dying, Bozo will be the, the one that sacrificed and die in place of you. So how great is that? This is a very, very strong and great skill. Instead of reviving um, yourself, you cause the enemies to die in place of you. So um, yeah, that's a very cool thing. This makes... Um, Xion a very great uh, potentials. A new playstyle for this um, protagonist faction. Yep. Okay, then moving on to the active skill. And this is just part of all the passive effect. And upon triggering um, the enemy to die in place of you, uh, this skills will enter this effect will enter a CD of two turns because before you can use this effect again. So yep, that's it. Okay, the active skills. Okay, has three abilities. So number one, recover 30% of your HP and obtain your talents effect, King's Order, for two turns. Number two, you'll be able to move three blocks and attack again after using these skills. Number three, when using these skills, buff, buff turn count you had, buff turn count you had, Whenever we reduce. Oh gosh, why did I say buff? buff. <laughs> and sorry, a quick correction is that um, the passive effect, uh, all three effects are linked together that um, enemy die in place of you, then you recover 20% of your own HP. So everything went into a CD of 2 upon trigger. Then the active skills is a great um, synergy with your talent. So after casting these skills, not only will you be able to act again, you recover 30% of your HP, and you straight away obtain your talent effect, King's Order, which in return straight away gave you and provide you the damage, the 20% damage increment you need. And you also will be able to attack the enemy first. So that's pretty cool. And of course, um, this skill definitely has its downside if you're using his cavalry cast, as you guys can see here. If you're fighting against um, Lancer unit and if you attack first, there might be a high chance that you might suffer great damage or you might even die from the attack. And 
And all right, that's it for his two C abilities. Definitely um, a must equip, the best one of the best, be it PvP or PvE. The only way it's not going to be that useful is during um, challenge events against boss. And if there is no minions around for you to um, kill off pattern and to have this ability to hold with. And yep, we're finally coming to the tree C, aka the last part of section two of this video. Okay, this is the tree C faction buff. The name is tra loosely translated as Heroic Sword or Heroes Holy Blade or Holy Sword. Okay, it has CD of five, a range of one block. The AoE type is physical single target. And it has both passive and active ability. So coming to active ability first. <clears throat> okay, number one. Okay, so okay before everything triggers. So the passive effect will will happen when when you first enter or when you initiate to cast skills your passive effect will trigger number one increase all allies protagonists offensive and defensive stats on the field number two when they go into battle increase damage deal by 15 percent number three when using single target skills and you're not able to kill the target enemy reduce the use skill cd by one turn minus one and number four the effect lasts for four turn and do not stack with other faction buffs so this is basically an upgrade version of his 2C faction buff. Um, the damage you do will be increased by 15% instead of 12%. It's slightly a bit more. But um, overall, it is still a very bad um, combination when you use other protagonist heroes who mostly main at... Um, who's best at spamming AoE type. So... SP Mashu and Emperor Lovina, aka Ares 2.0, uh, I guess is mostly out of the question. Alright, then coming to his active skills, the effect are as follow. Number one, attack and deal 1.8 times damage to target enemy. Number two, remove 5 buff from target enemy before battle. Number three, if at least two allies die on the field already, you will obtain this buff before battle known as Destiny. So Destiny will provide the following buff effect. First, when you initiate attack and goes into battle, increase damage by 30%. Second, you will attack first. Third, when you triggers your talent King's Order effect, increase this effect turn count by plus one turn. Four, effect will last for two turns and cannot be dispelled. Fifth, when using these skills and you cannot kill target enemy, you can act again. However, upon trigger, this effect will enter a two-turn CD before you can activate again. So, by now, if you guys um, follow me, you should have know or understand why Xion is a very strong hero that um, that is being released in the game. Is that uh, before his 3C ability, he already has act against skills. Then with the effect of his 3C, um, he has another act again ability. And this act again effect will happen when you are not able to kill the target. And this can stack or trigger with your talent pardon's effect of not killing the enemy. So you have... Um, when you cast pardon, your enemy will only left with the least HP, not one, but um, 
I'll say a few hundred, but um, for some reason they were just, um, I guess it's like within 1% range. And then if you do not kill them, you can act again. So this means you can make use of Xion to try to kill or pardon up to two possible target enemy. That's pretty cool. And the next cool thing about it is the third effect. If at least two allies die on a field already, you obtain the destiny buff, which apparently can stack with... Oh, sorry. Which apparently um, is the upgraded version of the King's Order. Instead of 20% damage increment, you become 30%. And if you guys see this grayish note down here um, is further elaborate on his talents effect about king's order and destiny okay um okay i'll be going through on this part first before we elaborate more about xion so things to note is that number one destiny is an upgrade version of the king's order these two effects will not stack or coexist or exist at the same time only one can be present. Number two, if you already have King's Order buff in effect, after gaining Destiny buff effect, it will overwrite King's Order buff instead. Number three, when you already have Destiny buff effect, when obtaining King's Order buff effect, it will be it will instead be used to prolong destiny buff effect by plus one turn so this give you guys a rough idea of how this um talents buff stack however the great thing um, that i've seen the pros playing in pvp currently is that there is a great chance that on turn one with some combo xion is able to rush into the enemy side and try to so-called almost killed off to enemies in one turn and leaving them um, crippled because he just pardoned off two um, strong enemies so you can cast pardon on enemies even with uh, even those enemies um that can revive so just to let you know like example you um, land this has his revive or resurrect passive ability that has not been used yet if Xion's rush into battle and for some reason he's able to kill off the full HP, 10,000 HP of um, let, of Ladin, uh, oh, sorry, of Landis, um, you can straight away trigger your pardon effect. Then instead of reviving with his passive ability, he's kind of being um, stagnatized there or, re or you may also consider revive through your talent then um, he cannot do anything and you can just aim for the next target. So this is how little Xion is if you are able um, to trigger his pardon ability. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And yep, we have come to the end of part two. And now we go to part three where we talk about the pros and cons ability and some of the possible bug or ways to abuse Xion's talents and skills effect. So here we go. Welcome to the third and final sections talking about the gimmick and tricks, pros and cons of his ability and how it works, whether they are considered buff and debuff, because after such a long time um the line between buff and debuff has kind of been blurred out by Tim Salon, I gotta say. And now we'll be talking about how his ability works. And I want to mention you guys also in for a treat about how fast his attack are. And yep, before we start, a great thanks to the mission shared I by the Languiza Data Bank. And here we go. Okay. Um the first thing that people might ask is fighting characters with multiple life. Uh, and going through pardon okay after you pardon an enemy um, they are left with 1% HP but it's not treated as 
killing off one life. So um, you guys can have a check and this is how it looks like. So after you manage to so-called deal the death blow to the enemy, um, when you kind of enter, this icon will appear. This is considered a skill, so I believe it can be silent. And you can choose to pardon the Lancer unit, as you can see down here. This is after you pardon the enemy. So you'll notice there is this um, icon on his ability that is attached to an enemy and it looks like it looks like the enemy is being stunned but not exactly so coming to number two which will we will talk about this okay number two point two is talking about pardon and idle battle are treated as two different buffs pardon effects will last for only one turn Whereas idle battle effect will last for two turns. Both cannot be immune and cannot be dispelled. However, the sad news is that both effects are not treated as debuff effect. This skills, uh, this ability cannot break off the soldiers, uh, the revival soldiers known as sin washers. The um, that when you don't have any debuff, if you receive death blow, you will be resurrect with 20% of HP. Yep. Um, so because it's not considered a debuff, if you really manage to kill the enemies afterwards, uh, they can still revive. Nor can you use Seraphine's um, abilities to increase his um, buff, uh, buff turn count. Because it's not a debuff, so they cannot stack. Okay, let, you guys can see here. Okay, um, the third icon is his pardon effect that states cannot move, cannot guard, attack, and use skills, and cannot be dispelled. The fourth icon, the one in red, is known as idle battle. Damage deal and healing received re re reduced by 30% cannot be dispelled. So I, I gotta say, um, it's kind of sad that they said it this way because based on the effect that you cause the enemy to have damage reduction and not able to heal uh, by 30%, shouldn't it be tr treated as a debuff effect? So this is why I say um, it kinds of um, it is getting more confusing, uh, at least for me. I'm not sure about you guys. And coming to number three, um, pardon's effect of next turn enemies will not be able to move, guard, attack, and use skills. On the animations or the pictures model that you've seen, it looks like the enemy um, are being stunned. However, the fact is that when it's their turn, the enemy can still choose to initiate to end their turn first to quickly um, remove this talent effect from the unit, the target unit, and it will not jam their turn. So as you guys can see here, yep. So um, unlike Chaos Hem, um, his Demon Pig's ability where you will lose control of a unit, or when it's being stunned, your character will um, move last. When it's your turn, you can still choose to click on the characters and let them end their turn. So the best way for Shion to go about is to attack enemy unit that has, a, that has already end their turn first. So your other units can come out and follow up to do um, additional death blow. Then number four, some of you might already think of um, abusing the pardon effect while still killing off the enemy at the same time um, the confirmation is that uh, it will not work one example is that if Xion bring frozen a frost armor or ice armor um, that deals additional follow-up damage six damage um, the sequence of triggering the ability goes you will trigger frost armor 
effect first, then followed by if you choose to trigger um, pardon. So of course you can choose to use pardon or not. It's up to you. It's an optional effect. It's not you are not being forced to use pardon. So you can still choose to let enemy die if you want to. And this will not um, trigger and happen the fake scenario where you um, act like you pardon the target enemy, but afterwards you um, kill the enemy off with the frost armor or any ability items ability that will do follow up damage. So um, this pardon ability will trigger last. So as you can see in this um, short animation here. So in older case and a lot of case, um, Talon's ability, if I'm not wrong, always trigger first. However, um, for his case, um, in order to not let you guys abuse the effect, um, they toss it in such a way. And number five, um, the pardon mechanism um, theory is that in reality, Xion, you can think of it this way, Xion apparently give the target enemy an additional health bar. So instead of uh, one health bar, the enemy has two health bar. You can treat it like the enemy resurrected, but um, uh, in such a way, if you want to um, think of how to think the gimmick works. So the case is that you give an additional, give the enemy an additional health health bar. So if you kill off the so-called additional health bar you give the enemy, it will cause them to be revived and left with 1% HP threshold and then triggered by the scenario that you pardon the enemy. Okay, um, as shown, as shown in the picture here. Okay, 100% um, chance to um, revive the enemies and cause them to left with 1% HP left. And even if enemies can revive, they will still be pardoned because it's like uh, you give them the HP. And this is the second scenario is that um, they make a joke out of it that Xion's, um is afraid to do death blow to the enemy. So he adds an additional HP for the enemy first. Then afterwards, he attack again and kill off that HP for the enemies and then resurrect them with 1% HP. So um, again, I gotta apologize if I have some translation made wrong, but um, you might, you guys just get an idea how it happens. So however, um, this effect uh, will lose out or cannot trigger and stack with um, as of current meta, these two effect. One is Zeritas 2.0 and Chloros Haze um, skill or talent ability of sealing off resurrect or revival ability of not able to of able to survive death low effect. So in this case, even with surviving death low effect, um, Xion will still kill off the target enemies and he's not able to activate pardon effect even if you add on HP for the enemy. So in this case, um, look at this animation here. So um, beforehand, Zeridas 2.0 already call, uh, use a 3C on land this and um, Xion then comes over and try to um, want to spam his pardon so they can act again. In this case, they will not stack. So things to take note. So um, this is just an, a joke scenario note that they said from Xion, Hey brother, I have not pardoned you yet. Why did you die? Then the enemy, what's the point of giving me extra HP when you already sealed off my revival? You already sealed off um, resurrection skill. <laughs> and regarding um, his exclusive skill two, one or two, uh, let me check again. Give me a moment, guys.
Okay, exclusive skill one, divine radiant sword. Um, this is just talking about um the attack speed and animation. So um the attack speed that's stated here is one thousand eight hundred mf, and it's considered very slow. And uh, it's uh, the, the way they use it is kind of very technical. It's very non um it's non wave type. So there is no chance of losing damage. Oh, okay. This is talking about some of the skills animation. If you notice, some of the attack um, looks like it's a wavy pattern. So some of the attack might fly off screen. It do not attack the enemy. However, um, for this ability, um, this exclusive skill one, all damage will definitely hit on the target. And things to take note is that on PVE, when using this skill range ability and combining with Xion's faction buff effect, these skills will have no C, um, like what I presume early on, so minus one and minus one. So, uh, and uh, another mention, um, these skills do not have like a, you have to enter a two turns CD upon trigger, and this means that um, Xion is not only great in PvP, but also in PvE, you can use it for challenge, fighting against bosses, you always have ability to spam, and for all, if not followed by um, fighting against like um, other ancient, those ancient challenge events, you can uh, make use of him to do some combo and spamming of the skills. And then regarding his rapid attack act again ability, so, Okay, two parts. The first part, number one, uh, for targeting Xion himself, uh, regarding Xion is that if three blocks around him, there is hostages, uh, there is any hostage around him, he can revive. And we talk about hostage, are uh, talking about enemies that have been pardoned and has the buff effect, idle battle. So in this case, they want to make it easier for players to understand we call it um, the enemy deck has been pardoned are known as hostages okay so it's kind of like um, Andre um, effect of pledging loyalty to allies three blocks around him then they can uh, resurrect however things to note that is that even if the hostages any of the hostage are not three blocks around you you will still have the re um, revive ab ability icon. However, you will not be able to revive. So during the actual combat, do not be uh, do not be fooled by this um, mis misinformation. I'm not sure if they will do any update and patch on later on. Okay, number two, as long as there are hostage around. Xion, um, on Xion, there will be this um, aura, aura around him that states when hostage die in place of you, you'll receive fixed damage. However, after testing, even if the hostage target unit has that um, HP revival helmet that um, you revive upon taking fixed damage. Uh, they still are they still cannot be immune to death. So um, just go through with this. So this icon. So meaning if um, enemies has effect that can be immune or resurrect yourself from fixed damage, I believe um, they will still die. And then the third effect, dying in place of you, is not um, dying straight away. The replacement do not die straight away, but um, instead they are being killed in place of Xion fixed damage. 
and the damage source is considered to be from Xion. This means that um, this is a test log they done with Xion and Andreo. So um, if the enemy has been pledged loyalty by Andreo, so if Xion kill off the target, uh, and then um, the, the resurrect target will die in place of Xion, it's considered Xion who killed the hostage. And this will trigger the act again ability of Andreo's act again effect. And in case you guys can't remember or know or understand how Andreo's ability works, kindly check out my past video or you can check out from um, any Langriza M Wikipedia um, that features his ability and effect. So things to take note. Then number four. Wow, so much explanation. So number four, if three blocks around you, there are multiple hostages. Um, the one that will be, they will die in place of you is the one that is nearest to you. And then if the distance are the same, they will go according to um, the sequence on the field. And do know that um, the sequence as of a current meta uh, is based on the sequence that you choose to assign the target hero to battle on the field. So um, moving forward, when we do this explanation, we'll be talking about more and more about this um, battle, uh, choosing to go in battle sequence. Wow, there's so many things to explain, okay? Number five. If the target uh, hostage has multiple HP and after using that one HP to die in place of you, idle battle effect will still be around even if they resurrect. Number six. When Xion triggers his revive ability, meaning um, when he will take a death blow, only then the hostage will be killed off and die in place of him. Then when the hostage are not three blocks around Xion, near Xion, or when Xion is being um, his passive are being sealed off or his revive are being sealed off, the hostage will not die. So this take note, um, this is like a concurrently ongoing passive ability. This is much like SP Leon um, passive skill. So once your passive has been sealed off or your revive effect has been sealed off, it will cause the, res the hostage to not die in place of you. So this is the downside. So the joke they make here is that um, from Xion, I have not um, have the time to kill off the hostages and I die already. <laughs> then number seven, summon unit can be used as hostage. So you can choose to kill off um, summon unit like the archer from Liana summon and then you can still choose to pardon them. Number eight, If the hostage choose to attack Xion and the hostage um, dies, Xion will die too. And this means that both hostage and Xion will die together, and Xion will no longer have, uh, will no longer be revived. Uh, this means that he will not have resurrection. So this is um, kind of similar to. The scenario if Andreo um, had an ally with his pledge loyalty and if they get blasted and killed off by AoE together, they will both die at the same time. It's not like um, the ally dies and Andreo will be revived. It's treated as both die together at the same time. Number nine. If. Andreo's 
pledge. Loyalty ally unit has been taken into hostage by Xion. What other scenario that will happen? Scenario 1. Ondrill do not use 3C to kill Xion. Xion will kill off the pledge loyalty hostage. Ondrills will recover full HP. However, Ondrills will not be able to act again. So this is um how it will happen. So in case you guys want to counter or tackle off against Andre, this is um what you can do. Scenario two. Andre do not use three C to kill off Xion, and has two HP. And both of them um die to get in battle. We call it self destruct. Andre's revive effect will trigger first. Then Xion will trigger his resurrect effect, and then Xion will kill off the hostage with the pledge loyalty effect. Andre will recover full HP, but again he will not be able to act again because um it's considered that uh Andre is not the one who killed off the enemy. I guess um this is what it can be probably if I'm wrong it's kind of pretty long and uh, yep even though with explanation it still looks a little bit confusing. Okay then last but not least coming to the three C Okay um Number one because it's a faction buff um so it's a faction buff effect. Okay, um fifty percent damage increment is a gen generic effect. E um a soldier's unit will Will get affected too. However, um, like I said, AOE will not benefit from it. So when using a uh, single target skill and you're not able to kill off the target enemy, the skill CD will be reduced by one. Then for Xion case, uh, the way this effect triggers is. The trigger time uh, will happen before Xion choose to pardon the target enemy or not. So in Xion case, this is a 100% trigger effect because if you're going to definitely 100 pardon an enemy, um, this will happen. Even if you don't choose to pardon enemy and if the enemy will have, uh, is not able to die, um, you definitely enjoy a minus two, 2 CD. For um, this talking about his radiant sword effect, how they can stack. Then number two, the king's order um, <coughs> talent effect can be dispelled. However, destiny cannot be dispelled. But um, they can, you can still ban Xion from getting. Uh, you can use debuff effect that will ban or stop Xion from getting buff. Okay, and what if in this scenario, what if um, Xion is being banned from getting buff effect? So, in this first case, after getting um, banned from getting buff effect, Destiny and King's Order can, cannot be added. However, if you already at the start had the Destiny effect, then you receive the debuff effect of not able to get strengthened effect or being buff effect you will still um, when you trigger your king's order effect you will still get plus one turn for your destiny second Uh, King's Order effect can be dispelled by Tenyo Dress and also Rosen Seal's Faction Buff effect and lost your attack first ability. 
So okay, you guys can see um on the left is destiny and on the right is king's order. The highlighter section state that um they can be dispelled. Uh, the one on the left is cannot be dispelled, while well, the one on the right can be dispelled. King's order is a weaker version and destiny is a stronger version. Then third. For the 3C where we talk about at least two allies die and I have not elaborated on that part is that this include summon units so there's not a lot of restriction and this is very great. I gotta say um, if you include summon unit and this is best to go combo with LLR Kreese aka the Bright Summoner because she can summon the, the unicorns and at least twice so yeah that's pretty good you can abuse it for the sake of Xion and that's it we have come to the end of um, talking about all his uh, pros and cons and the way to abuse and to get gimmick of his effect now talking about um, his bond so hero bonds um, These are the benefits and then for unlocking his bond, um, the great news is that only for defend bond, he need his step mommy, Piana, um, help during your gate of fate, your um, second last gate of fate um, to unlock. Other than that, uh, just generic, as long as you unlock his cavalry path, you can unlock your attack bond. So that's pretty cool and this is all the casting ingredient he will need for all his class then this is his um stats at rank 6 default stats like i said um 594 is pretty weak but um because of the buff from his talent adding attack of 25 percent he's strengthened by that and this is the class stats different So attack wise, um, both class are the same. However, um, stats wise, cavalry is the weaker one in return for greater mobility. And not to mention the great thing is that um, he can stack and combo with SP Leon um, passive effect. I just think of it, this is pretty cool that um, he can work together with SP Leon. And level 4 bond effect, um, when you choose cavalry class, level 4, um, when going to battle, damage your unit received reduced by 10% and then at, for the level 7, when receiving attack from close combat, you increase your attack by 10%, then infantry class, when your unit HP is 100%, damage you receive reduced by 10%, for level 7 bond, when you initiate attack um, and your HP is uh, attacking enemy HP who is higher than yourself, going when going to battle, increase your damage by 10%. And then this is all the skills um, he has. And okay, that's it. We have come to the end. And for the final part, we'll be showcasing the item builds and enchantment effect to be used for Xion. This is it. We have come to the end. And this is the suggested enchantment and item builds for Xion. And yep, um, some of the items, there are too many items being released. I do not know all the names, but um, you guys will should be able to judge based on the picture icon. I I only know that for the weapon on the one on the left is the one that um after attacking the enemies you the enemies will not be able to guard. And on the the weapon on the right, the effect is just when you have faction buff, you further um get uh, additional five percent attack stat. Okay, and those are all the soldiers you need can get. And the enchantment wise, um, it's suggested go with Breeze. 
o'clock so okay that's it and if you like this video remember to like and subscribe if you have any questions do leave it down in the comment section below and then sorry for the video again is very long and draggy because there's too much things to explain and cover up we, because we're going to much more detailed understanding of the characters for you guys to determine if they are strong or not thank you guys for watching this is coming and wish you guys all the best on your summons on your banners goodbye